Hi, today we are going to learn how to animate NPCs for your VR chat worlds using mocap, as well as possibly creating animations for your VR chat avatars. Tiny disclaimer, this tutorial is also available in text form and you will also find that in the video description below, as well as a Unity package and links to all the resources I'm going to be relying on in this video. The reason why we do not want to record ourselves locally is because we are trying to avoid the constant tracker jitter that happens when you record yourself. If you've ever seen any video of people dancing in VRChat, then you've probably seen the, the issue itself. It does not look good at all. Um, the reason why we want to record remotely is because you get the smooth and loved IK information. As you can see on the left, you have the local recording. You can see it constantly jittering. It does not look good at all. On the right, it's remote. There is no issue at all. It's completely smooth. Remote recording will also save you a lot of time in terms of animation because you will not have to fix any keyframe manually afterwards. So you might be wondering, how do you set that up? It's super simple. I've provided a Unity package in the video description. It already has a mocap actor and camera agent inside of it. But in the case of creating an NPC for VRChat World, you will, want, you will want to use your own avatar just to make sure there's no scaling issue. Personally, for this tutorial, I'm going to be using the uh, sample avatar from the VRChat SDK, our trusty Fred. Unpack it, open it. You'll want to go to the VR Labs folder, World Constraint, World Space Object, drop it into your avatar, unpack this object by right clicking, open it, take the anchor object and drop it at the top of the avatar, open the container and delete the cube. Then you'll click to you need to click on the top of your avatar, go to the animator component and you'll see that on the right side of the component, there's a tiny cog, just left click it and click create mesh recorder. This will create an object within the avatar that you drop into the container object. You can already see the pixels. This is what the mesh recorder does with the shader. It encodes bone rotation into a pixel color. And this is what will be next decoded in Unity for the animation file. You need to do two things on this new recorder object. You need to change the bounds, uh, extend bounds from one to 1000. This is to make sure that the camera will always be within those bounds and see those pixel, pixels on the screen. You also need to disable dynamically occluded, dynamic occluded, just in case there's any occlusion currently going on in the world and it might have an effect, I'm not sure, but just in case. VRChat might also have fixed the your VR lip sync, which also will enable people to use audio files to make NPC stock in the future. But as it is, this is all you need to do. You can also upload the mocap camera actor through the SDK as it is, and then we can move on to the recording requirements. So there are three recording requirements for this to work. The first one being that the person doing the recording using the camera actor needs to have its VR chat window resolution set to 1600 by 900. The easy way to do it is to hold shift while left clicking on the VR chat exe within your folders and you will be able to set the resolution within that tiny menu. Uh, do not set it to window. You need the VR chat window to be full screen. And that window is the one you will be capturing within OBS. The next requirement takes place in the OBS video settings. You will need to make sure in the video section that you have 60 FPS set. And next in advanced, you'll need to have color space 709 and color range partial. Also make sure that the borders of the recording within OBS are actually aligned correctly and that the entire VRChat window is being captured. And once you've gone through all the steps, you should be left with something that looks like this. This is the perspective of the VR chat mocap camera. The person on the screen is the actor. The camera can see the pixels on the left. The colors seem correct. Every time the person moves, the color of the pixels also changes. The camera is full screen. It looks correct in OBS. All you need to do is capture that video and then actually make sure that the video does replay correctly without any corruption whatsoever. We are now back in Unity, but this time with a video file that contains all the information we need. If you use the Unity package that I've dropped in the video description, then you should be set up with already the scene that you need. Otherwise, go to the Shader Motion Dev folder, example, and load this scene. The only thing you need to keep are the part five camera video and screen for uh, some a few reasons. So the only thing that you need to do is add your avatar to this scene unpack it if you need to. And within this, add a motion player script. This is the only requirement for this whole thing to work. Within the motion buffer, you will need to add a motion deck. Once that's done, all you need to do is go to the part five video player, go 
and add the video clip that you you have generated and press play you can now see the video you took earlier and the avatar uh, hopefully replaying that animation correctly without any any you know hiccup any oddities it's still it's happened correctly now, earlier I mentioned that we were using the world constraints and that is for this specific reason. If you are recording in a world and you need the animation to take place in a very specific spot, well, you don't need to do anything because the constraint is at zero at spawn and the system is able to tell uh, because of the, the setup I've created that the animation just takes place around that spot. So if you join your world with the avatar already on, all you have to do is go to that spot in the world, do the acting, and then the animation in Unity, you will just have to put it within the model and the animation will already be placed in the world. You will have nothing to do. You won't have to place it manually. All that time is saved and it's really helpful. Now for the final part, make sure you get out of play mode and we can move on to the last step. Click on your avatar. In the animator, again, when I click on the tiny cog, click on record animation. This will open a tiny new menu that you can put everywhere. Now you'll need to create an animation file. Easy, just run, drop the animation file into this slot and change the frame rate if you need to. I've personally only used 30 FPS. Um, I don't know if 60 makes a giant difference, but it's, you know, it could make a difference. And if you wanna try, please do. Aside from this, we said a few different things earlier. In this, you I disabled loop by default because it's on by by default. Um, I don't know. I don't really want to mess with the other settings because personally, I I, enjoy, I I set up my animation so that there is at least one or two seconds before I actually do the animation, and that I, I can clean the keyframes manually if I need to. I can start recording whenever I want. Uh, you'll see in this case, uh, I'm going to start uh, press play, and I'm going to start. And that's currently recording the animation. And once I click stop, it will generate the animation. Boop. That's done. If I click on run, open the animation window, you can now see that all the keyframes exist. So if I were to create a new tutorial avatar, boop. if I were to back, if I were to create an animator, uh, boop, boop. Drop this animation inside of it. Give this animator to the new tutorial avatar. Hide the first one and click play. This avatar will also play the animation that we just generated. It is exactly the same. There's no issue whatsoever. If you wanted for some reason to clean the keyframes of that uh, animation, you can obviously do that. It's not a lot, but you know, the longer the animation goes on, the more keyframes will be created. At 60 FPS, uh, there might be a, you know twice as many keyframes, so it could could be could be heavy. But in my case, it's never been really that bad. So this marks the end of the tutorial. I hope it was helpful. Um, obviously, none of this would have been possible without the shade of motion created by Lux. This tool is fantastic and extremely easy to use. I highly recommend you to check out the link in the video description to see the wiki and learn about all the other things you can do with the tool. Um, thanks to also to Liuma and Constipations who helped me uh, with a few things that they set up initially it was really helpful. Additional thanks to the VR Labs group. They've got some amazing prefabs specifically aimed at avatars, but some of them work for worlds. And I highly suggest you go and check out the link in the, the video description to see what they have in store. If you were to run into any issue, feel free to drop a comment below and I'll do my best to help. Otherwise, you can find me on Twitter as well as in the official VRChat Discord. You can always ping me there for any question or issue you may have and I'll do my best to help. I hope this tutorial was good enough and I'll see you next time.